Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Towns in modern India should be built with the aura of ancient Indian village. Sustainability is today is a buzz word, but it was prevailed in ancient Indian, Indian village. So therefore, we should have that and we will uh, let us recall that what we had learned in the last lecture, we basically looked at rural housing and of course, before that about agriculture and textile. And today, we will be talking about the urban housings and town planning in uh, ancient India. And uh, let us look at what are the problems with the modern town planning and buildings. And we can look at uh, whether we can get some solution from this uh, ancient Indian town planning or not. So, as we know that uh, it is very difficult nowadays to keep the temperature in the house a comfortable level. So, for maintaining the internal temperature and also humidity, we will have to use a mechanical cooling and heating system for which we will have to use a lot of energy in modern buildings. Beside this, uh, Waste water management is a big hassle in a modern town. So, also we do not have a greenery, means where we can store these grains. And uh, of course, most of modern and complex life uh, we are living. Actually, if you look at we are living a very complex life in modern days, as a result, we have higher level of carbon footprints. And road safety is a big problem, particularly in India, where around 400 or more people are dying per minute in this country due to road accident. And uh, criminal activity is going on at an alarming rate in this uh, place. And so also, management of crime is a very big challenging problem in modern days. So, what are the crises of sustainability if you look at global warming? is a thing what we feel every now and then. And beside this, we are encountering the environmental pollution, over exploitation and uh, utilization of natural resources. As a result, there is a depletion of uh, natural resources and so also fossil fuel. So, uh, therefore, it is very important to have a town planning and we will see why we need to have proper town planning, so that we can lead a very good life. Because the town planning depends on topography, ecology of land and the needs of the society, not the greeds of society or greeds of uh, you know certain uh, people, um, you know market forces, which we are now uh, what you call encountering and governing body and cultural heritage that is important. But today, most of the towns are being established and uh, without much planning. It is just going on, particularly in this country. And we are not taking care of uh, neither the ecology nor the, you know, our cultural heritage and other things. So, indigenous town planning might have started much before in Indus Valley Civilization, what we are calling nowadays Saraswati River Civilization, which was around 2300 to 1500 BC, covering an area of 1.25 million square kilometers. This is a very big uh, you know, area. And of course, uh, after demise of uh, Indus Valley Civilization, there was a second phase of town planning in ancient India around 600 BC, which is quite evident in literary works and that is merged with the modern town planning, because there is a going on till today. And of course, in modern time, we are just uh, taking the ideas from the western countries and then implementing without thinking. And the research work reveals that second 
phase of town planning was neither a part of earlier phase. Earlier phase I mean basically the Indus Valley civilization nor the revival of it nor it was imported from outside unlike in modern time. It is basically uh, was developed indigenously which was evolved for ages together. And uh, if you look at for both first and second phase of ancient uh, town planning, the archaeological evidence are present in plenty to establish that those are quite good and um, also what you call indigenous in nature. And Indus Valley civilization if you look at it was uh, basically in uh, these areas, these are the rivers Indus rivers and then uh, Ravi rivers and there is a Ghagar river which is uh, dried uh, almost. And these are the spot if you look at this yellow color spots like Rakhi, Ghari, Kali Bangan, Harappa and then your um, the Kot Diji and Mahinjadaro, Mehergar and Dholabira and there are several other places where you can have this Indus Valley civilizations. You know this region if you look at this is the region what I am saying it goes to some other portion of Haryana also present day Haryan there is a place known as uh, Rupa region. This region belongs to that uh, what you call Indus Valley civilization. And nowadays we call it Saraswati Sindhu civilization as I mentioned earlier. And this uh, civilization was you know located around Indus uh, river as I told and uh, Ghagar, uh, Pakistan and also northwestern India. And if you look at this 1.25 million square kilometer is basically uh, north side it is uh, in Ropar in present day it is called Roper in Haryana and earlier name was Rupa and uh, which is not shown in this map and uh, south the Bhagat Rav, which is in Gujarat somewhere which is also not shown here in this figure and uh, Alamgirpur UP which is near Mirat uh, this place and in the western side this is Sutakajan door uh, which will be nearby this place uh, Sutakajan door. So, it was a quite a big area where these civilizations were there as per the excavation by archaeological survey of India. And uh, town planning concept if you look at it is basically in uh, various uh, if you look at the excavation of large number of cities namely Mohenjandaro, Harappa, Lothal, Kalibagan extra uh, basically uh, belong to the Indus Valley civilization. And this uh, if you look at it, it is having uniformity in their layout that means there was a basically a planned um, town planning and uh, and this clearly indicates that these cities were built with proper design and architecture with the following factors. These factors are basically if you look at the topology and ecology of area being riverine civilization. Of course, most of the earlier civilization were riverine means by the side of river and uh, unlike in modern time and a rectangular area with proper orientation with proper cardinal points that means there will be a point around which the cities will be growing and uh, dwelling place cities according to social status of course not all the places but uh, in some places and grid iron system of laying out streets cutting each other at the right angles and today if you see that um, you would not find that kind of thing and uh, adequate system of water supply through well and tanks extra because water is very important for life. So, therefore, always uh, provision uh, were being made for the water and improvised system of fortification for defense and prevention of floods and high level of sanitation and underground drainage systems. 
uh, you could uh, you know find in the excavation sites of Indus Valley civilization. And especially uh, of their town planning and it was basically sophisticated and advanced urban culture. And it is claimed that the Indus Valley civilization was having the world's first sanitation system. Individual wells and separate cover the drainage over the street for waste water. And today we see that there are several drains we do not have really cover in the, our country at this moment. And houses open to inner courtyards and smaller lanes, so that you can really go and then do that. And impressive dockyards, granaries and warehouses and brick platforms and protective walls. And uh, massive citadels were uh, available at that time to protect the city from floods and attackers. All houses had access to water and drainage facilities. And beside this, it is believed that city planning might have taken place through certain government agency as it calls for elaborate organizational work, because the uh, city was planned in a very organized manner. Therefore, some body should be there to have that uh, city planning. And uh, if the city was really being planned and developed, then naturally there will be large number of experienced people like architecture, designer, masoner, carpenters, plumbers and labor extra must be there. That means, there is a system which was prevailed at that time. And light geometrical and surveying instrument were found in these cities during excavations like what I have shown here, like uh, this is a compass kind of things and these are the some uh, balance systems and of course, the threads and there is a kind of a stand for this thing for putting this balance for surveying purposes, this instrument can be used for surveying and also labeling purposes. So, Indus uh, Valley civilization, if you look at there is a development of cities, it is believed that cities grew out of villages that existed in the same locality, maybe for around 100 years and it grew in its size and density that might be surrounded by several small towns and big villages. The cities might have interlinked by trade and commercial activities and social relations extra and uh, large land areas for agriculture, rivers, forest and uh, rural communities were surrounding the east city. That means that uh, this agriculture and rivers and also forest at that time uh, forest used to give the products which will be useful for the day to day life and uh, which is a part of their city, uh, particularly outskirts kind of things maybe, and which is, is the need of the hour also. Like that means, the east city should be self sustainable and we can learn from this. And uh, if you look at classification of towns, the small villages or hamlets around uh, 0 to uh, around something 10 hectares. And uh, large town 10 to 15 hectares and uh, cities around 50 hectares and 1 hectares around uh, something 10,000 meter square. And if you look at uh, these are the cities which were there in Indus Valley civilization that Mohenjo-Dara is around 200 hectares in size and people were around something 35 to 45,000 people were living this estimation and Harappa was 150 hectare in size, 23,500 people were living at that time. And similarly, all others of course, uh, the Rakhi Ghari and then Ganevarla around 80 uh, hectares in size. Of course, Dholavira was a little larger around 100 in size and Rehman Dehri is a smaller, you know, you can say it is a town kind of things, which is something 12,000 people were living. So, these are of course, uh, in a size based on that they have come up with some population, uh, I mean like uh, kind of things. 
So, what we will be doing, we will be basically looking at Harappa civilization and topology kind of things. If you look at the Harappa, is basically nearby this place which is uh, Ravi by the side of Ravi river and it is uh, extended over a circuit of 6 kilometer on the left bank of river Ravi in Punjab province of Pakistan. Pakistan of course, the uh, new name today, earlier it was a part of India and around 23,000 people were living in that uh, area and city might had been developed earlier during the code DG phase uh, maybe 2800 to 2500 BC. And earliest city coverage of an area of 25 hectare later on it might have uh, you know grown to the larger in size and uh, it became a center for trade networks extend to Baluchistan and Afghanistan. Afghanistan is here in this region it might have spread and west sea coast in the south and towns were built over the raised mud brick platforms and the uh, high mound at Harappa is surrounded by a massive mud brick city wall with a large square ramparts and uh, of course, uh, these are the things uh, you know what uh, people could see even today and uh, because the remainings are there. And um, today of course, that uh, you know you can see that other things like if the tomb of Muslim saint uh, you know you can uh, today see that because after that people have uh, you know used that portion also. So, if you look at this is the what you call excavated uh, layout what people got in that region you can see that is the area, mound area, they have classified in various areas. There is a fortification here and there is a Harappan well in this region. Of course, uh, later on people might have built this uh, mosque later on at the tomb. And this uh, region is basically Ravi and Koti uh, and there is a circular platform here. And this we call is a mound F which is granary and for storage space for the grains and this is the uh, this area is basically uh, might be the place where king or the administrator might be uh, staying in this region and this is the Harappan town and this is the your river Ravi and of course, now it is a dry bed. And uh, if you look at uh, people got also some pottery cleans here, uh, evidence of pottery clean and uh, they are thinking that mound E is the craft areas and there is a cemetery in these regions. And uh, of course, uh, there is a uh, perimeter wall various walls they could remnants of the wall they could see from various regions. And um, I mean they have excavated these regions and they have located several remainings of the structures. So, uh, if you look at uh, this Harappan town planning uh, had a citadel mount with a square towers and basins and lower town as I told uh, uh, or as I had shown you earlier that surrounded by massive brick walls and it has large open areas inside gateways which might had used as a market or checkpoints for taxing goods coming into the city. These are all hypotheses or a uh, kind of things what people have made. And it had clusters of houses outside the city walls which might had used for temporary rest stops for traveler or caravans. If you look at basic house plans is a single room tenements and houses with courtyards even if you look at uh, when we discuss about um, rural housing, courtyards were earlier a uh, part of rural housing and uh, houses um, if uh, rooms on three sides opening into a central courtyard. Nearly all large houses had a private wells that means, uh, if it is a large house the person must be rich. So, therefore, he is having their personal well for water. And uh, people found also the hearths like uh, maybe brick or stone line fireplace. 
which was might be used for the cooking purposes or people say that it is for the pujas also and for uh, yagyas and for maybe another things will be heating and it was common in every rooms and bathroom in every house with the tubes leading to the drainage channels that means the water will be going out to the channels for the drainage and uh, first floor of bathrooms were also built that means bathrooms were also built on the first floor and uh, there is a brick staircase was provided access to the upper floors because there is a two storied uh, houses what people are conjectured and houses built with perimeter wall and adjacent house were separated by a narrow space of land unlike uh, today all our uh, houses are you know joined together in most of places and uh, granary with the areas of threshing grains which you will see as we go along see some of the pictures burnt bricks mainly were used for drains and wells and bathroom while sun dried bricks were used mainly for fillings timbers were used for flat roofs like uh, had i had shown you earlier uh, that culture of having uh, you know flat roofs with the timber and mud might be there at that time and which is still there today in this country particularly in rural areas harappan architecture if you look at uh, the building materials wise uh, they were using mud bricks baked bricks mud means basically it's a dry sun dried bricks and wood and reeds average size of uh, bricks were found to be 7 into 12 into 34 cm 7 will be height and then this is the width and this is the length 34 cm 10 into 20 into 40 cm for city walls and larger bricks have also standard ratio of 1 is to 2 into 4 so if you look at this is the ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 4 and mud bricks baked bricks and wood or stone were used for the foundation of walls of the houses doors windows were made from the wood and mat house floor uh, uh, were made out of hard packed earth or the soil basically and uh, even in rural areas we do use uh, today particularly uh, for the in the houses of poor man for bathing areas and drains the baked bricks and stones were used roofs uh, with wooden beams covered with the reeds and packed clay as i told that it was uh, being used earlier days largest building made entirely out of wood what uh, people are anticipating i am really concerned whether how could they say this because wood might not be there okay and windows uh, the shutters or the lattice work are being used architectures for the large public structures if you look at large buildings were meant for administrative and ritual purposes and access uh, routes are provided throughout from one area to another and market and public meetings were held in large open courtyards houses and public buildings were grouped with shared wall and uh, formed larger blocks and were accessed by wide streets and most houses as i had mentioned earlier had private baths and toilets as well as the private wells let us uh, look at the granary if you look at granary of harappa is found in mount f as i had shown you earlier and it is a brick structure that was built on a massive brick foundation over 45 meters north south and 45 meters east west if you look at this is the north south can region 45 meter this side and 45 meter this side which is not shown and which is a quite a huge structure wise two rows of six rooms that appear to be the foundations these are shown like 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are all uh, rooms of which will be 7 meter wide i'll show in the next uh, maybe figure partly paved with the baked bricks uh, if you look at this uh, two rows of 
there is a one rows of six rooms this is one rows and there is another rows here right six rooms six six twelve rooms are there and in between there is a road this is the road which is around seven meters wide apart and which was paved with the baked bricks each room measures around 15.2 uh, meter length this house will be around something 15.2 meters and 6.2 meter wide width kind of things and of course it has three sleeper walls with air space between them if you look at this is the this one wall one wall here the other wall is here and the other wall is here this space will be for the air or this is known as the air space. So, if you look at question arises why this air space uh, being provided at that time, maybe for uh, what you call maintaining the temperature as it is a granary, maybe temperature will be affecting the quality of the grain being stored. So, therefore, it might be given and uh, this can also be utilized even modern days and more research is required for that. So, with this I uh, will stop over here and uh, thank you very much and then uh, we will discuss more things next.